I rise to join with the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, uh, the Treasurer and other members in paying tribute to indeed a great Australian, Sir John Leslie Carrick. Uh, John Carrick was a, a father, a husband, a veteran, a senator and a champion of the causes to which he devoted his life. Uh, he passed away on the 18th of May, <coughs> aged 99 years, uh, just uh, shortly after uh, his beloved wife, Lady Angela, who died in February of this year. Uh, they had three daughters, Diane, Jane and Fiona. I spoke to Jane uh, last week. Uh, Jane is married, of course, to a former member, uh, Bob Woods, and uh, I got to know uh, Sir John uh, through uh, my uh, relationship with uh, my mentor and father figure Tom Uren, who of course served uh, with, uh, with Sir John. He grew up uh, the fourth of six children in Sydney, in Wallara, moved uh, to Ramwick and eventually Bondi. Uh, he studied at Sydney Technical High School he delivered gas bills for AGL while studying economics at the University of Sydney. Uh, he lived in a time, though, that was turbulent, and he enlisted in the AIF in December of 1940. Uh, he was posted to the 18th Anti-Tank Battery, and his unit was deployed to West Timor as part of Sparrow Force in December 1941, with orders to deny the island to the enemy. Uh, there he was captured along with some extraordinary, some extraordinary Australians. Tommy Wren, Bluey Rutherford, uh, these were, were giants of uh, Australian history. Uh, Lieutenant Carrick was, was captured two months <coughs> later together with other survivors and was shipped to Java in July 1942. They then moved to Singapore's Changi camp and uh, worked on the railway, as they put it. Uh, quite that simply at uh, the infamous Hellfire Pass. Uh, I had uh, one of the great opportunities I've had in my life was to visit uh, Hellfire Pass for the opening in 1987. This was a time when uh, many of these veterans, of course, since then uh, have passed away. Uh, so Weary Dunlop, uh, was there along with Sir John Carrick, uh, Tom Uren and other veterans. And the extraordinary emotion uh, of these men who, who went through hell. When you see uh, Hellfire Pass, and I encourage Australians to, uh, to visit uh, there and see literally the rock that they cut through uh, often with no real tools uh, being offered, uh, with suffering from malaria, suffering from uh, starvation, uh, the mistreatment that occurred uh, to the uh, prisoners of war uh, would have, I think, understandably uh, broken uh, any human being. What was remarkable about these men uh, was uh, that uh, they were so stoic about their experience, that they had a sense of solidarity and looked after each other at that time, and coming together uh, more than uh, 40 years after the war had ended, uh, they had, and it was my understanding is it was the the, the largest gathering of these men that happened in that period, in one place. And uh, these were tough guys, um, but they cried, they talked, they drank, and they celebrated life and survival. But there was no bitterness from any of them uh, towards uh, their experience. What they were determined to do was to take that experience 
and, and cherish life and make the most of it for themselves, for their families and for their country. And uh, Sir John Carrick, um, on, that, uh, on that visit, uh, there was a time where he wanted to go uh, down the River Kwai. Uh, and uh, we went down on a long boat and I sat next to him for about four hours. Um, there and back, and uh, the treasurer had just spoken about the long chats. So he had a chat with me. I was a very young man. I was in my early 20s. And uh, we had a chat about our different um, philosophies, him an absolutely committed uh, Liberal uh, Party giant of the Liberal Party. Probably, uh, you know, three giants of the Liberal Party have been uh, Bob Menzies, Sir John Carrick and John Howard. I think, I think they're the big three uh, in history. And uh, there he was with a young democratic socialist. On my first overseas trip, never been anywhere. And uh, you know, overwhelmed by this experience, which Tom, you ran in order to, uh, I guess, develop my life skills had, had taken me on this trip. And uh, Sir John uh, was very generous in just talking about uh, the times that he'd had, uh, which if he was like Tom Uren, uh, Tom only ever spoke to me about his war experiences during that trip. It's the only time in his life. And I would have spoken to Tom at least once a fortnight for decades. And Sir John talked about, in a personal way, uh, his experiences and told me some things perhaps that he hadn't told other people. Um, and I certainly kept uh, that confidence. I regarded it as a great honour. And, and he was sharing it in order to educate me. And he talked about uh, his involvement uh, in the Liberal Party, about his philosophy, about his commitment to early childhood education. And uh, he was a, a great thinker. Uh, he was an intellectual. Uh, and uh, after that, I was speaking with Jane last week, and uh, she was aware that we, we corresponded uh, over, the, over the years. And uh, he was always very generous uh, in his comments. And uh, the last time that I saw him was at uh, Tommy Wren's service at, at Sydney Town Hall, where even in spite of uh, his ill health, uh, he was determined uh, to, uh, to be there. What was remarkable, I think, about all these people, and uh, one would hope that we would have the character to respond in a similar way, was that they bore the Japanese as a people, no ill will at all. And indeed, uh, Sir John Carrick refused to give testimony to any war crimes tribunal because he regarded that as about the past and that it was structures and systems of fascism that had created the problem, not the people. It was the political structures. And people had different ways of responding to that. To, uh, for Tom Uren, uh, he was a collectivist. He believed his whole life uh, in the importance of uh, the collective uh, from that experience of the way that the Australian prisoners of war uh, shared everything. And as he put it in his first speech and, and uh, subsequently, uh, he put it as uh, the, the, the fit looking after uh, the sick, uh, those who had uh, the most giving it uh, to those who needed it so that the officers uh, didn't have the same hierarchy as occurred under the British system, which was across the other side uh, of the river. Uh, and indeed, in terms of survival rates, the Australians did much better. For Sir John Carrick, it was the importance of the individual and liberty. And he had a very coherent position, uh, which in spite of the fact that on the surface uh, was very different from Tom's, there was a great deal of consistency, essentially, about both of them, uh, and a consistency that was all about 
uh, the Australian national interest. Uh, this is what uh, uh, he, uh, he, he said. Uh, Sir John Carrick said it was systems, not people, who caused uh, the sort of atrocities uh, that happened during that war. And he said, although I had seen many atrocities, I saw the evil compulsion of the system on the individual. He said, it's not people who create savagery, but the systems of government. Human nature depends upon the political and social environment in which it finds itself. Uh, I thought that uh, Troy Bramson's obituary in The Australian was very good. And he interviewed Sir John Carrick uh, last year. And in that interview, uh, Sir John said, uh, good God, I've seen the most horrible things. Uh, I saw human beings in terror. And uh, there he was um, talking about the Japanese, that the whole structure of that system was one of terror. And today, when terror has a different form, uh, in particular the rise of Islamic terrorism, uh, a form of fascism that seeks to impose uh, its views on others, in the most horrific way uh, that discards uh, humanity and uh, human rights. Uh, today that challenge remains uh, for us in a different way. Uh, Sir John came back uh, and uh, to Australia, enrolled in a law course at the University of Sydney and took a job as a research officer in the New South Wales Division of the Liberal Party. Uh, Two years later, he became the General Secretary of the New South Wales Division, uh, a position he held until 1971. It is remarkable that someone went through, someone who began uh, as General Secretary in the 1940s was still the General Secretary in the 1970s. Uh, I find that, that quite extraordinary as someone who Six years in a party office was six years too many for, for myself, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, um, he, he went on to become uh, the uh, uh, Minister of Housing and Construction, Urban and Regional Development, Education, National Development and Energy, and Minister assisting the PM on Federal Affairs. He was appointed the Leader of the Senate in August 1978 and he retired from the Senate in uh, June of 1987. So it was interesting, there were a number of veterans who had, at that time, a solidarity across the chamber. Think about the turmoil of that time. Uh, the election of the Whitlam government, uh, the dismissal in 75, uh, the uh, period of the Fraser government, and then the election of the Hawke government. Uh, there were a whole lot of people during that era who served uh, in this place, uh, who I think compared with our life experiences, we are so fortunate. We, we literally stand on their shoulders as a result of their sacrifice. And we should always uh, remember that. In 2008, uh, Sir John was appointed a companion of the Order of Australia for, and I quote, distinguished service in the area of educational reform in Australia, particularly through the advancement of early childhood education and of the development and support of new initiatives in the tertiary sector. He continued to be an active servant of the community, post politics, serving on boards and advisory committees, serving no doubt as a mentor to people like the Treasurer and many others uh, in the Liberal Party, uh, but also being prepared to uh, give advice to uh, people such as myself, uh, whilst being totally loyal uh, to his party. And there's no question that there was no more passionate supporter of the Liberal Party than Sir John Carrick. He also understood, and it's something that we should always understand as parliamentarians as well, that above all, we have one interest to serve in this place, and that is the national interest. Sir John Carrick is someone whose entire life was about serving the national interest. And I pay tribute to him today, and I express my sincere condolences uh, to his family, 
to his friends and to uh, his comrades who he served with. There are very few of these veterans left now, uh, but uh, we uh, are very uh, humbled, I think, in their presence because what they did uh, for the country uh, should never, ever be forgotten. May he rest in peace.